Audible Images, exceptional audio and video entertainment systems. In today's show, Ed visits with Dan Diagostino President Bill McKeegan. I wanted to just sort of, you know, for, for the viewers, give them a little idea of, you know, sort of where where Diagostino came from, you know, and uh, I think you got a little bit of history there. You could probably talk about it. You want to sure. give us some background? Sure. Uh, you know, Dan, uh, Dan D'Agostino is, is obviously one of the, the legends in our business. Uh, he's now founded two uh, very prominent companies in, in our world. Uh, obviously, the first was Krell back in, in 1981. Uh, I joined Dan there in 94, so I've, I have a long history with the man. So we started D'Agostino in 2011. Uh, over the years at Krell, obviously it started as the two-channel performance company because that's what audiophiles and yeah. the, the market, and that's where he thought he could make a mark in the business. Uh, but the company expanded in lots of different directions, theater and lower priced products and things like that. And when he started D'Agostino, and officially it's Dan D'Agostino Master Audio Systems, uh, but when he started the company, he really wanted to focus on his passion, which is the ultimate performance. His go-to product, because that's what he knows and loves more than anything, are amplifiers. And so the first product that came out were the Momentum Monos, uh, a, a unique amplifier in many ways internally, uh, but also externally. It didn't look like anything, still doesn't look like any other product out in the marketplace. Uh, that was a very conscious decision to show a brand new kind of industrial design. Uh, Dan has always had a great eye for, for design, and I think this is his crowning jewel. And again, starting with him in 94, I've seen a lot of the... That's funny, because my, my initial reaction when I first saw it was, it's pretty cool, it's kind of weird, you know, you know, but boy, it is, I mean, the thought people when they see it now, the reactions are amazing. I mean, people love it. I don't, I have, there are some people that think it's a, a little, you know, too flashy. The but they still appreciate it, you know. They can, even there, they're, they're not—they're not like put off by it. They're like, it's just not quite my style, right. but it's really interesting for sure. Right. Know, so. Everyone appreciates the workmanship, the build quality, the design effort. But you're right; it's it, everyone's opinions. Everyone has different tastes, and so it, it's not for everybody. But fortunately, uh, it has been for a lot of people. It's been a very good run for us uh, at, uh, at D'Agostino. Uh, but the Momentum amplifier was, was a unique, like I said, a unique piece internally and externally. Uh, and the overall goal was to make a very powerful amplifier in a relatively small package. Now, there are other powerful amps in small packages, but they use what we would consider a, a lesser power supply design, or they might put fans in the amplifier, because as you make power, you make heat. So heat's always the enemy of an amplifier or the, the power of an amplifier. Uh, so you have to cool it and again you can lessen the power supply design to keep that down you can put fans in to help with the cooling uh, but what we figured out or what Dan figured out is we needed a different material and that's where the copper which is such a classic part of the the look right. but there's a huge function in that copper is 80 percent more thermally conductive than aluminum which is the classic material for heat sinks in our business to do that cooling uh, so because of cost and also the, the workability yeah. of them. Uh, oxidation is a concern with copper anytime you touch it. If, if you have pans at home or you have a penny in your pocket, the you know, it look, the look changes and it's not as pretty, the, the, the gleaming it's copper. It's called a patina. Patina, that's, yeah, that's, that's a nice way to say rust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rusted copper. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. So it, to make sure that that stays with the polishing and the clear coat finish and to continue to have that gleam that the amps have, uh, is, that's the expensive part, that really is. So from there, we've expanded uh, to the stereo amp and the momentum, the preamplifier, the integrated, which we've got sitting in between us here. Uh, the streaming version of the, the, the piece, uh, which has the same basic power section, but now adds uh, the NAS uh, connectivity, a digital input, USB, uh, our own app on iOS, you know, modern day features right. with the legendary performance. So right. for somebody looking for that, can I use it with my phone? Yes, you can, but it, it gives you the performance that usually those types of devices can't deliver. Right. Right. So, we continue, we continue to expand then as the progression series as we go beyond uh, to take our performance from that ultimate level of speakers, the ultimate level of products and systems out there to maybe just that next 
that next step down. They're just to spread the, the wings a, a little bit more, and that's where the, the progression right, series try, comes try in. And, you know, bring it, make it a little bit more affordable wherever it's practical to do that, but keep most of the performance. You know, sort of the, it's really the audiophile fantasy, right? You know, where can I cut some of the cost but still get all the performance? You know, that's sort of the goal, I guess, of the progression. It, it really is. And, and Dan, and, 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 and I say we because I've been with him for, for so long, uh, we always felt that the, the, the way to do that was to go to the top of the mountain first. You can never really tell how good you are, how good something can be, unless you just air it out on all fronts. No cost limitations, size limitations, certain things. Just what will it take to get the best performance? Then you know your, 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 your bogey. What, what, what's the target? Right. From there, well, we added that much cost to get that much performance. So maybe if we are going a step down, maybe that element, since it was just we'll that little bit. a few less hairs. Yeah, right? we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll take that cost out to, and we'll eliminate that. And that's, that's how progression and how the development has always happened at, at, in Dan's engineering group. Uh, right. you know, whatever the size of the team was, D'Agostino was one, it was yeah. Dan when it started. Yeah. Now we have four guys do, doing the work and it's, it's only because it's been a nice success. It's been a nice run uh, yeah. at D'Agostino. Yeah, I think he built on all that knowledge and experience he had from the past designs. He had some very popular designs with Krell, right? I mean, they really some, some landmark designs, really. Some legendary. Yeah. I mean, the the the, the high end guide to electronics, the Absolute Sound Book. He's the only man to be featured in two companies. I mean, it's right. it's because he had oh, such legendary products yeah, yeah. in his first company at Krell, and now. He's been able to continue that onwards with with D'Agostino. So, right, right. And so, um, you came in over the summer. I was actually on a surf trip, which was kind of cool with my son. But uh, so I missed you. Brought by the Progression uh, preamplifier. So I missed my first opportunity to see it in person. I've got another one coming for clients. I'll get to see that soon enough. Sure. But uh, the uh, the DAC. What's the we got a timeline on the DAC? I'm sure people are kind of wondering that. The people are interested in that that preamp. Yeah, the, uh, the, the the progression preamp or the progression series in general has really taken off quite nicely. It's been a, a, a nice launch since Munich. We, we showed at the Munich Hi-Fi uh, event earlier this year in May uh, and really started shipping in earnest in July and August. And we're somewhat overwhelmed. The, the orders have been just phenomenal. Uh, your client has had to wait a little bit longer than we yeah. would have liked, to be uh, perfectly honest. But it's... Uh, the, the preamp uh, has been shipping as the analog only version for about the, that same time frame. The digital DAC uh, option now is starting to come live in, in production, so we will start offering that as a as a part of a standard order. You can you can put that. Uh, we wanted to make it optional. Not everyone will will want to add that. They have a different digital front end of some sort, uh, so th we thought it was important to put it in, but not force folks to. Yeah. I don't want to. Right, I don't want to pay for something I might not be using. Yeah. So we were we were sensitive I mean, to that. At, at, at the level of performance you're at, it's it's both very believable that somebody might want to have an external back. And so why would I want to buy the one of course. side of it? You know, if you don't really have to have it, so I think it makes a lot of sense. But we also thought that since we are building a full blown power supply, right, for the preamp, where right, it has its own separate supply, just like its bigger brother, the yeah. moment, momentum, than the audio chassis. Uh, but since that metal work and that power supply is already there, if we just made the power supply a little bit more robust, so to speak, so that it could drive that extra circuitry in the, in the DAC, then that would be a minimal addition to the, to the basic cost of, right. the, of the unit. Uh, and then someone could add, <clears throat> add the DAC, which is a $4,500 option. But if it was a standalone, it would probably be a $15,000 right. DAC. It is a very capable device. Uh, it has uh, software-based fil filters, so we can update those along the way if okay. different uh, formats come live. And QA by chance? Uh, it's something we're talking about. We'll, we'll, we'll see. It does seem to be taking off. There seems to be of, content. A lot of energy. Yeah, uh, so it is something we're definitely looking at. Uh, and the software-based nature does give us the ability to go in that direction. Uh, it is a discrete DAC on the hardware side, so it's not just a generic chipset. Uh, it is uh, something unique to, to us. Uh, and then on the sort of practical side, it's a 32-bit, excuse me, 24-bit 384K on the PCM side, basically the highest resolution that's available today. Uh, and then it's 4X DSD on the, wow. on the DSD side, obviously. So that's the highest resolution of content available today on that front. 
Uh, it adds up sampling to that level of performance. So if you are 16, 44, 1, or something uh, you know, of a more basic quality, we do try to bring up right. its performance. Uh, so it's, it's a really nice DAC. Uh, so far it's been, again, we've had a few out there been very well received and, and so production and will start. straight DAC, no streaming, no, uh, you know, like rune type possibilities or things like that. Correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's no. a streaming device would be separate, right? It, exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, USB, it is coax, it's optical, but you'd need a device to push, to push the content to the yeah. device rather than pulling it, rather than streaming to it. The M-Life, the digital version of this guy, as you know, that has the other side. It's the stream where you'd be, right. where you'd be pulling really. it. Visit the Audible Images showrooms to hear what you've been missing.